If you're looking for the best anti-inflammatory diet and you're confused because of all the opinions on the internet and you want to learn more, then keep watching. Happy New Year everyone! I've been meaning to make a post and a video for a while now but just didn't get a chance to because I've been so busy with work but I'm so glad to be with you guys again. Before we start talking about the different autoimmune diseases and the different anti-inflammatory diets, why don't you comment below on what kind of anti-inflammatory diet you've been on and what worked for you. Thank you for all the comments and views and for watching my video on my autoimmune story. As you can see from all the comments on there, there's people with different diets that have gotten better with various autoimmune diseases. So what does that tell us? It tells us that every individual is different and there is no one size fits all for autoimmune diseases and arthritis. Everybody can get better with a different diet out there. So we have people commenting on there that they got better with a plant-based diet. Some people saying that the plant-based diets are actually poisonous and other people saying that they got better with a carnivore diet. Please be open to different opinions, but we will look at the evidence today on different autoimmune diseases and different diets. So there's not gonna be one single diet that's gonna fix everyone because everyone's gut microbiome is different and also the genetic makeup is different as well. First, we're gonna be talking about the Mediterranean diet. So I looked up the data for the Mediterranean diet and different autoimmune diseases, and it seems like it has the most evidence out there compared to the other diets that are available for autoimmune diseases. So I know there are people on the internet, like bloggers that talk about the Mediterranean diet and other diets, but something that you have to know is that the American College of Rheumatology actually recommends a Mediterranean diet for something like rheumatoid arthritis in our integrative medicine guidelines. So I'll be talking about that in a future video about what the recommendations are from the American College of Rheumatology and integrative medicine. In addition, the American College of Cardiology also recommends the Mediterranean diet. So there are different recommendations out there that advocate for a Mediterranean diet. And here are the different studies that I found, and there are many, many more. There are some studies here on RA, rheumatoid arthritis, there are some studies that show that there may be a potential benefit for multiple sclerosis as well as lupus. So why might a Mediterranean diet actually work? Well, because it's full of whole foods. It limits a lot of the ultra processed foods. So the foundation of whole grains and fresh fruits and vegetables and includes lean protein as well. So it is a type of anti-inflammatory that can work and those are part of the reasons why. There's lots of fiber in the Mediterranean diet and studies have shown that eating fiber is important for the gut microbiome and to also help with gut microbiome diversity as well. Another type of anti-inflammatory that we have to talk about are the vegetarian and vegan diets because there is evidence out there on the scientific journals. As you can see here, there are studies on rheumatoid arthritis and vegetarian diets even dating back to the 1990s. So this was a study on rheumatoid arthritis treated with vegetarian diets. So these patients got better compared to patients who were not on a controlled diet. There are other studies out there on vegetarians and different autoimmune diseases, such as lupus. There's a recent study here on lupus and plant-based diets. And these patients also got better as well. It showed that their disease activity got better in lupus patients. And finally, we also have a study that talks about vegetarian diets and multiple sclerosis. So this was a systematic review on multiple sclerosis and it showed that patients um, did improve with multiple sclerosis and it says that here plant-based diet is the backbone for dietary recommendations but it also says that what they have found is that ketogenic diets could possibly help as well. One of the main reasons why vegetarian and vegan diets can work, especially if it's whole foods, which I advocate for, I don't recommend a processed vegetarian or vegan diet. The reason why a whole foods vegetarian or vegan diet works is because of the fiber, just like the Mediterranean diet. Some people do react poorly to certain animal meats and they can potentially flare. Now everyone's different. There are patients out there that have gone to eat a paleo diet or 
carnivore diet or keto diet that have gone better, but some patients, when they do eat those types of diets, they can potentially get worse. That's why every individual is different. So if you've gone better from a vegetarian or vegan diet, comment below, I would love to hear from you. So the onion protocol diet is very popular and it essentially is a paleo diet. It's one that's often used in the autoimmune disease community. When I looked up the paleo diet and autoimmune diseases in the scientific literatures, I did find some articles. It looks like the autoimmune protocol diet has had positive effects on Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune type of hypothyroidism. The study was done at Cleveland Clinic and it showed that inflammatory marker C-reactive protein did go down. And also the quality of life measured went up as well. The autoimmune protocol diet was also studied in inflammatory bowel disease at Scripps Hospital in San Diego. And it showed that the patients with these diseases went on a six week elimination diet and 73% of patients were able to achieve clinical remission by week six. Now, I know you're probably thinking about the next one, which are gluten-free diets. So gluten in America is not, it seems like it's not as healthy as the ones in Europe. I often hear from my patients and friends that they either have some gluten sensitivity and when they go to Europe, they're actually able to eat the pasta and gluten containing foods and they don't have any problems there. But when they come to America, come back to the US, they start getting their symptoms back. So it's very interesting, but gluten is something we need to talk about. So gluten-free diets can potentially help patients. Now they have done studies on gluten and gluten can potentially contribute to the leaky gut. Dr. Fasano from Harvard, he did studies on gluten and it did show that it was able to contribute to a leaky gut. Now, whether that is clinically significant and translates to every single patient is still up in the air. Um, some patients, they could have a leaky gut. However, it doesn't mean that they have to have symptoms or any autoimmune diseases. The gluten-free diet has been studied in rheumatoid arthritis, but there aren't that many studies that exist yet. The study actually looked at four rheumatoid arthritis patients on a gluten-free diet, and it did state that there are only varying degrees of success. Now, there's another study that did come out that looked at gluten-free diets and autoimmune disease patients. And what they found was that 911 out of 1,408 patients in all different studies actually improved their autoimmune disease symptoms by going gluten-free. That's about 65%. That's a lot. Whatever anti-inflammatory diet you decide to pursue, it's important to consider gluten in the equation. Now, I eat gluten myself and I do okay. I've had some patients who do flare in gluten. I have some patients that do very well on gluten as well. It's important to keep a food journal and document whether you are actually flaring with gluten. Now there's no perfect test out there that will show that because you eat gluten, you'll actually have a clinically relevant inflammatory response. There is no accurate test out there. There are tests that show if patients have potential gluten sensitivity, but they're still not 100% accurate at this time. Now let's talk about another very popular diet and that is the keto diet. The keto diet can be potentially anti-inflammatory and one of the mechanisms is that it increases beta-hydroxybutyrate, also known as BHB. So what is beta-hydroxybutyrate? Well, it is a substance that gets created in the body and it goes up when you're fasting or you're eating a low carb, high fat diet. And that's what the keto diet is. It's a low carb and high fat diet and high protein diet. So when you increase beta hydroxybutyrate, it actually decreases something called IL-17 or interleukin-17. Interleukin-17 is an inflammatory marker, immune marker that actually goes up during inflammation. So when beta hydroxybutyrate goes up, IL-17 goes down. And that's how keto diets can potentially help with autoimmune diseases. I know there's gonna be different opinions out there on, oh, keto diet's not healthy for you. Keto diet is, um, there's too much meat in it. I'm not here to talk about that right now. What I'm here to talk about is that the keto diet can have an anti-inflammatory property to it. And studies have shown that. And such as the multiple sclerosis study that I talked about earlier, they said that 
keto diets can be potentially used for multiple sclerosis. However, the jury's still out and we need more clinical evidence at this time. And similarly to a keto diet is a carnivore diet. Right now for the carnivore diet, there's really not much evidence out there that I could find in the literature. However, you'll probably see in the comments in previous videos that people does, do advocate for a carnivore diet and I can't really comment that at this time because there's not much evidence, at least in this video. Another diet that's very popular is a low oxalate diet. Now, the low oxalate diets can help with arthritis. I'm not sure if it will help with specific autoimmune diseases. There is a specific arthritis out there that can be caused by high oxalates and that is because sometimes patients because of genetic differences, they can have a high oxalates in their body which can lead to arthritis or they have a certain disease or condition that causes high absorption of oxalates in the body. Okay, and there's uh, the arthritis is called oxalate arthropathy and the only way you can diagnose that is by sticking a needle into the joint and drawing the fluid out and then looking at the microscope to see whether there's oxalate crystals in the arthritis. So the disease is called primary hyperoxaluria or secondary hyperoxaluria. Now primary is a genetic difference and Secondary is when it's caused from another disease such as chronic pancreatitis, inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, biliary cirrhosis, and also bariatric surgery. And when you do have these hyperoxaluria diseases, you do want to limit the amount of oxalates in the body such as spinach, rhubarb, and sweet potatoes. But if you have a general autoimmune disease and you don't have hyperoxaluria, there's no evidence at this time that you actually need to go low oxalate in order to get better. Certainly, I've seen patients who did not go on a low oxalate diet that got better. So overall, is there truly a best anti-inflammatory diet? I've talked about the evidence in the different autoimmune diseases in this video. It seems like most of the evidence is trending towards a Mediterranean diet, but I'm sure there's gonna be other research in the future and every single patient can get better potentially with different army disease diets. I wanna reiterate that there's no one size fits all and every individual has different food sensitivities. So if you haven't commented already, please comment below to tell me what you think of this video and if it resonates with you and what you've experienced as well. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.